The fact, uh, the real fact is that the Chinese economy is still slowed down, but we still can find some uh, new opportunities. Hello, I'm Penny Brown with the MFG Advocate on IMTS TV. Today, we're talking to Jingbing Li, AMT's Director of Asia Pacific, to talk about some of the opportunities that exist in the Chinese manufacturing market. How are you today? Great. So, you know, put this in context. There's been a lot of news lately about China that maybe sounds kind of scary. So what's the real situation? Okay, the uh, real story is that uh, China hardly grew its economy with their own growth model, which is uh, export-led and uh, investment-driven growth model. And uh, over the last few um, years, uh, China's demographic dividend or uh, population bonus and has been cashed out. So the labor cost increased considerably as the stimulus package and the government spending lead to huge local government debt that resulted in the uh, overcapacity of many sectors like steel, cement, uh, coal mining. Um, this is why people are uh, worried about the Chinese economy. But the uh, personally uh, I think in the fundamentals of the uh, Chinese economy remain fine, despite the uh, difficulties and uh, challenges China is facing. So to put all this in context, what does it mean for industrial manufacturing in China? Yeah, right. The manufacturing industry, uh, they are um, facing challenges. Uh, but uh, uh, if you look at uh, the China, China is a huge country. Yeah, we, we have about 31 provinces totally in China. Um, if you look at the machine to consumption, especially for the imported machine to consumption, and top 10 Chinese provinces and cities consumed 81% of uh, total imported machine tools, which is about the $11 trillion. Um, most of the U.S. companies is doing very good job in tier one cities like Beijing, Shanghai, Guangdong. But unfortunately, AMT companies or US companies are doing much less business in tier two cities and provinces like Jiangsu, Zhejiang, Chongqing. We call tier two cities. What are some of those other tier two markets? I like uh, Chongqing versus Chongqing is a remote area. Uh, from Beijing. If you fly, it's about three hours flight. But um, uh, very few uh, people realize that Chongqing is the largest uh, automotive production base in China. Uh, Chongqing produces about uh, over 2.5 uh, uh, million units of uh, cars, trucks, uh, buses each year. And uh, Chongqing also is one of the largest uh, cities uh, making electronic products. Um, every one of the three laptop computers on the marketplace in the world is made in Chongqing. So China is the largest motorcycle producing nation in the world. Every year China produces about 20 million units of motorcycle. But in Chongqing, Chongqing makes 50% of total China motorcycle production. So you can imagine how much business we can get from that area, I mean the tier two cities. And also we have some example like uh, Liaoning, like Shandong. And uh, give you one example for say in, uh, in the Zhejiang province. In Zhejiang, we have uh, over 10,000 job shops. Just think about 10% of job shops need the new machines. How big market that be? So I think our members or U.S. companies should pay more attention to the tier two cities uh, and the provinces in China. And um, if we uh, uh, look at the industry sector, we can still find uh, a lot of uh, business opportunities for machine tool companies. You know, uh, some of uh, you know the performance of some uh, uh, automakers uh, are not as good as before. But big guys like uh, GM, Ford, and uh, you know, Mercedes, then Benz, BMW, and those big guys are doing pretty well. They still keep invest investment in China. 
to expand their production capacity. So like G GM, they announced they are going to invest $1.2 billion in Hangzhou city for a new uh, plant. And also they announced to invest more $1 billion in Chongqing uh, to uh, build a new factory. So all those big guys have a huge investment plan in China. In the aerospace industry, we have a few, few um, big programs like ARG21, which is a regional jet program. We have a C919, which is a, we call large aircraft uh, program. And uh, the Chinese aircraft companies, they receive money from central government every year. So they need to spend those uh, money for a new machine to purchase. And also the uh, robot automation industry and uh, you know, 10 years ago, nobody believed that China is going to use robot and to replace manpower. But now it comes a uh, reality. Um, two years ago, uh, China became the largest uh, robot market in the world. And the last year, China consumed 56,000 units of industrial robot, an increase of 54%. So experts uh, predict that uh, this increase in trade uh, will continue in the next five years. So I would say that in the next five years, uh, robot and uh, automation system will have uh, uh, explosive growth. So if you look at all those opportunities, I think uh, so machine tool companies do not worry about it. So you just go there, uh, find new markets, get business. So beyond those tier two markets, what other kind of bright spots do you see in China right now? Also, you see the China, um, uh, Chinese government decided to um, reform our several sectors like uh, SOE, which is state-owned companies. You know, we have a lot of uh, state-owned companies in China. In terms of uh, uh, output, uh, uh, SOEs account for 40% of the total economy. So uh, most recently, I think in May of this year, Chinese government decided to, to do reform all the SOEs, uh, which really means that uh, uh, those SOEs should go to the market, uh, get business by themselves. So they will not get the subsidies from government anymore. So you will see um, a lot of SOEs uh, will go bankrupt in the next few years if they do not make a profit. Uh, before all those uh, SOEs, the government uh, asked them to manage asset instead of uh, capital. The difference managing uh, capital and uh, asset is that uh, if you manage asset, you do not need to uh, say, okay, we can ma make a profit. If you manage uh, capital, that means you got to pay more attention to the cost of uh, capital. right? So with that kind of reform, I think um, our members or U.S. companies can get uh, opportunity to sell their product and uh, services. Also, I'm not sure if you uh, hear the new word called Made in China 2025. It's kind of a national strategy, just like a German uh, Industry 4.0. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, the whole idea is that uh, China tried to upgrade their manufacturing facilities. And a lot of Chinese companies right now, they can make low-end, middle-end products. But very few Chinese local companies make high-end products. In order to upgrade their facilities, definitely they need high advanced machines and technologies from overseas. So I think in those areas, U.S. companies can uh, have opportunity to, to sell their uh, products and uh, services. So compared to say, you know, 10 years ago, if a company were looking to get, you know, grow into China, mm -hmm. what different advice, I guess, or would you give them now as far as the mindset to have if that's a market where they want to go? Well, 10 years ago, um, no matter what, it's just go there, sell your products and services. But right now, I think uh, you really need to pay more attention to the policies. In China, we call the policy equals uh, our, our opportunities, the business opportunities. Just like uh, made in China 2025, what does that mean? What opportunity we can get from uh, made in China 2025? You should pay more attention to that. You should understand uh, 
what that means for manufacturing uh, industry. So you need to do a little bit of marketing uh, in China. So a lot of, a lot of uh, companies, they pay a lot of attention to the sales, not for the marketing. So you really need to understand the policy, try to find the new markets. But uh, everybody knows that there are two ways to increase the sales. Uh, develop a new product for existing markets or find new markets for existing uh, products. So I think um, what we need to do is uh, find new markets in China. That's my, my, my advice. Well, thank you so much for your time today, Lee. Yeah, you are welcome. You thank can you. go to AMT's website, amtonline.org, and find out about the full suite of international services, including the ones offered in China to AMT members. Thank you very much. Thank you. This has been Penny Brown with the MFG Advocate for IMTS-TV.